science meets science fiction, where no man has gone before. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Dr. Zhang Jia, Professor of Astronomy at the University of Florida. Welcome, Dr. Jia. Thank you. So what are your areas of specialty? I'm, uh, my specialty is the exon planet research and also uh, instrumentation. Most people have heard of the Star Trek TV show and movie franchise and are familiar with one of the main characters, Mr. Spock. In the story, Spock was born on a planet called Vulcan from a Vulcan father and a human mother. You and your team just made an interesting announcement involving Vulcan. Tell us about it. Uh, the, well, the story is uh, kind of interesting. Is, uh, we started a uh, discovery of this uh, planet well, a year ago, and then we started writing a paper. And uh, until uh, this April, we submit the paper to a uh, monthly notice of uh, Royal Society. And, um, and one of the calls uh, point out, uh, this pan is having to be uh, on the 40 Aridanas. And uh, that is, um, Jean uh, Roddenberry point out, that is uh, um, the Vulcan host, host star. So in other words, we found the Vulcan. And um, so from then on, we suddenly realized, oh, this is certainly this is interesting to bring the science and the sci-fi together. So let's, let's back up for a moment. What is the Dharma Planet Survey? Uh, the Dharma Planet Survey is uh, dedicated for a uh, um, nearby star. It's uh, like 150 star, the, most of them like sun-like star. And we plan to use our telescope and the instrument built all by ourselves to, you know, to look for no mass planets and include habitable planets and all these stars are within 190 years away, which means our solar neighborhood. How did you detect Vulcan? And what do we know about the planet itself? Uh, the planet itself right now, we measure that it's about eight over ma Earth mass, and also possibly you know, two times of the Earth radius. And um, so the location is about 42 days away from the sun. And uh, uh, in terms of distance, it's about one fifth between the sun and the Earth you know, kind of distance. So, uh, so therefore, based on that kind of character, you know, the mass and the location is all match well to the Star Trek, what they said is close to the sun, and also the, it's more massive. You know, human actually, when they walk on this uh, walking, they said it's uh, easy to get a tide. So I guess you know, these guys have two times the gravity of us, you must be get a tide easier. So did you observe the planet directly? Now we uh, observe the star, you know, because the planet is so faint. You know, even though this is uh, one of the closest star, it's only 16, 90 years away from us. But, but really, the, the distance, you know, the uh, mega planet is you can't see by eyes. So therefore, we, we monitor the star and see the star movement caused by the planet gravity. So, so we basically measure the, you know, use what we call the Doppler technique. So what do we know about the star 40 Iridani star system? And how far away is it? And what part of the sky is it? Uh, the, the, uh, for, uh, this guy is, is, uh, um, is about 1690 away, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, it's, uh, uh, it's right next, to, it's on the constellation of uh, Eridani, and uh, next to the uh, Orion uh, constellation, which is famous in Orion Nebula, and everybody knows in the winter times. You can look at the south, and um, then uh, you'll, you'll pick up that uh, uh, constellation. And this star has to be visible by eyes. It's like a, uh, right at the dark light, you can see that star. And so that's kind of fun. You, know, you can really see the Vulcan home from our, with our eyes with our telescope. What kind of show would a triple star system put on in the Vulcan sky each day? I mean, do Vulcans even have days as we know them? Oh, they do. You know, actually, this, this star, we, we, because we discovered it's only within like 42 days from the, from the their sun, and they are mostly uh, night uh, tidal locked, like our moon, you know, being tidal locked by our Earth, and they only see one phase. So therefore, these guys uh, orbit the self like 42 days, just like their uh, orbital motions uh, uh, time. So basically, every day there is probably like 42 days of Earth. So what benefits does this kind of research offer the science community and mankind in general? Um, I think the, the most important thing uh, is, um, you know, of course, from a scientific point of view, this is a close to the uh, sun, you know, the, the, the super Earth uh, around the solar type, uh, type star. And um, so therefore, we can do a very, very detailed study about its properties to understand, the, you, know, it, uh, uh, you know, atmosphere and uh, the environment. So that probably offer that kind of very scientific advantage for science investigations. But in terms 
public, obviously, um, there's two uh, areas you can think about. One is area, of course, human now getting more and more excited about space exploration because this guy is so close to us, is our labor. So therefore, we maybe someday can travel to this kind of planet system. So therefore, the space exploration could be very exciting. But the other part is, uh, you know, sci-fi. And that is a uh, big community people, you know, uh, care about, you know, uh, the Star Trek and uh, our space, you know, future exploration. And then, then obviously now, this is a human imagination, you know, from 1960s, people, you know, choose this star to have, host the Vulcan. It's just imagine. But now, suddenly, you know, after 60 years later, you know, astronomer now, we, we found this planet and it's really close, you know, match with the, what they describe in the, in, in the sci-fi. So that's amazing in a way, you know, humans have a lot of imagination, but many of them, after many years effort, we make it realize, just like, uh, you know, Da Vinci, you know, 500 years ago, he invent the concept of an airplane, but he probably didn't see the airplane until like a much later, you know, white uh, brothers, uh, when you fly something, now everybody who can fly, we can link it together. You know, I fly from China to the United States, become a you know, professor here. So this is all the human imagination and, uh, and push for that, eventually leading towards new discoveries. And now these guys can, you know, can encourage us to have more imagination so we can push for technology to them. So therefore, this discovery could be uh, inspired uh, generations to think about, you know, to really imagine big things and maybe push for better society and the better technologies. What follow-up plans do you have to study Vulcan? Um, for this planet, specifically, we are actually talk about uh, quite a few things. One is uh, one was uh, last week at uh, uh, Calari Islands on this you know biggest telescope in the world uh, in optical uh, called Calari Cam uh, Telescope uh, GDC and uh, 10.4 meter telescope. And the director already talked uh, discussed with me. We plan to follow up to do the you know further. Uh, monitor of the star to see if we can pick up any of the planet signal directly, you know, such as the atmosphere or maybe the you know, the, 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 uh, the 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 photon from the planet itself, and uh, and and also we are uh, also talk to my collaborator and uh, also think about maybe even do study of uh, uh, possible through maybe space telescope you know, to do some of the study and um, see if we can pick up some signals. But certainly this one, because it's so close to us, so that makes a huge advantage for astronomers, you know, because if you're far away, you faint, you don't have much photons. But regardless, you use ground-based telescope or space-based telescope. So this one is really our favorite. We can do a lot of study in the future. Well, fascinating. Dr. Jang Jung, Professor of Astronomy at the University of Florida. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about this research, or maybe they want to find more pictures of Vulcan, how can they do that? Uh, they can find to my uh, uh, website, the university will have the official website. They can find my website. They have, you know, they have email, they have phone, call, phone number, so they can contact me, you know, they can talk. But certainly this is exciting to bring to the community. So I, at this moment, I also like to thank uh, my team, you know, that you know, many years work together, you know, really uh, make this wonderful discovery and the Dharma Planet Survey move forward. It's really great to have this, you know, discovery share with the community. Thank you. Absolutely. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic, or maybe go to my website, tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.